video. Talk about two things related to cropping. Cropping. Do you know what the premise of a sensor zoom is? No. Nobody talks about this. And it kind of pisses me off because it's actually really important. Depends on what you do, though. If you're framing someone and you have complete control over everything, you like, you know, you you zoom with your feet with a fixed prime lens, you fill up, you take a head and shoulder shot. No issue there. Sensor zooming. Hmm. Even if you have a 70 to 200, even like uh, uh, the best hardcore wildlife shooters in the world are uh, not necessarily using a high megapixel camera, they're using a pixel pitch with enough translational information on it so they can crop the hell out of their shot. You know, taking pictures of the the yellow-chested, uh, speckled-breasted woodpecker over there a thousand yards away with their 500 millimeter f4, which is an extremely expensive lens. Why the hell would they be using a 24 megapixel camera? Wouldn't they be using like a Nikon D810? No, because the pixel pitch on this D7100 is a lot higher. That means there's more information per square millimeter of that sensor to crop out and still have information. Sensor zooming. This is where having a high megapixel sensor comes in handy. If not both, either a high megapixel uh, sensor camera or a high megapixel, excuse me, a high pixel pitch, a tight pixel pitch. Now, you have to determine what's what. I mean, not too many uh, hard, hard, hardcore bird, nature, wildlife photographers, but uh, they want uh, not necessarily a high megapixel count sensor, but they want a, a high pixel pitch so they're actually able to crop the hell out of the shot and have a lot of detailed bits of information to work with in Photoshop and Lightroom. So anyway, like a 24 megapixel sensor, if you multiply that times 1.5, you end up with a 54 megapixel sensor. If you were to take the same pixel pitch on that DX sensor and scale it up to full frame, it would be a 54 megapixel sensor. Like the 51 megapixel Canon 5D Mark I, it's which is a 51 megapixel, it basically has the same pixel pitch as a 24 megapixel Nikon D7100 sensor zooming. Anyway, like, perfect uh, thing that's important for people to understand is that uh, while the Nikon D3 and the D700 are the tits, you know, they're great cameras, and the notion of using either one of those, like for photojournalism, or for nature or wildlife, where you know cropping is basically almost mandatory, that's no dice. You know, there's some huge ass photo sites on that. It's only a 12 megapixel camera. When you crop it, you're going to start encountering some issues really, really, really fast. Really fast. So one of the great things about the Nikon D810 or like another high megapixel uh, full frame can sensor camera. Uh, since SNR firmware has improved and we don't actually have to have huge eyeballs or huge uh, photo sites or pixels on uh, the sensor, because the, uh, the AD converters and the increase in uh, the SNR firmware's uh, effectiveness in drowning out that noise, we're able to get smaller and smaller photo sites and yet still have amazing uh, low uh, noise uh, uh, image rendering. Uh, the ability to use uh, like the Nikon D810 and hopefully in a future iteration as something along the lines of 30 plus megapixels we have the ability to crop the hell out of the shot and that is wonderful I mean I do it all the time the other issue that people don't think is about uh, in taking uh, their pictures and dropping them uh, uh, you know in their computers is I see so many people that are so crop blind you know what it means to have a a a, a visual uh, um, detractor. You know, you have a, a strange attractor, and the image is like, wow, you have something awesome here, but there's something over here that's really bugging the shit out of me, and your eyes constantly being being pissed upon. It's like, wow, what a beautiful image. But there's like, there's a strange attractor somewhere over in the image. It's like, crop that crap out. I swear, you know, back in the day. We crop the hell out of everything all the time. You know, ultimately, if you have perfect ideal situations, which basically never occur, especially when it comes to sports action, wildlife, paparazzi, photojournalism, stuff like that, you, you, you get the shot, and you're lucky to get the friggin' shot. Okay, you're lucky to get the friggin' shot. Then you gotta crop it out to, you know, whatever is best to drown out the rest of the, uh, you know, unnecessary elements that define the simplicity 
of the image and the composition you want. Why does people put all these images up and they just they don't cross like, well, this is my image, you know, I'm gonna tweak it and mess with it and why aren't you cropping it? And people I crop the hell out of like a lot of stuff. A lot. Even things that I have control over. Especially if you're working quickly. As long as you get the composition and the lighting right, you know, if you have enough uh, information there as so far as uh, megapixel count that you're able to crop that, I mean, I'll crop it out. Crop it. Um, one person ages ago once called this crop blindness. You're, you're blind to a crop. It's like you could see what would otherwise be an awesome image and you just can't see it. It's like, well, I'm just going to keep tweaking this image. It's like, what about cropping it? I mean, that's one of the most, the quickest way instead of sitting there and jacking with the damn picture for 20 minutes in Lightroom, is to crop it. And as I mentioned before, a lot of the photos that you took that you think are shit, and here's where a high megapixel camera really, really friggin' shines. I mean, this, people talk about, well, high megapixel camera, high megapixel camera, high megapixel, you know, they only think in terms of, like, huge prints. And they're thinking wrong. The huge advantage of a high megapixel camera is, I guarantee you, even if you don't have a high megapixel camera, let's just assume that you do. All those shots that you thought were crap, all you do is you give them a glance. You know, you went through your shots, you gave them a glance. Like, I don't like that, you know. You didn't look at what was potentially there. And I don't mean like, uh, you know, screwing the hell out of it in uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, but I mean cropping it. You know how hard it is? It's like, you know, this is the part of the picture that's any good. Like, crop, done. And then tweak what's left. Every one of you out there with a bunch of pictures saved on your hard drive that you never screwed with, and guarantee you, absolutely friggin' guarantee you, that at the very minimum, very minimum, 5%, uh, in some cases 10%, of your shots uh, can be infinitely better than you thought that they were. In some cases, they can be incredible. If you're able to just toss away 60, 70, 80, even 90% of the image by cropping the hell of that crap out. When people don't crop their images or they reject, they quickly browse their images in Lightroom when they drop their card in their computer. Like, no, 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 no. There's a good one. No, no, no. They don't actually look into their picture. Here's the real advantage of a high megapixel camera. The real advantage of like a Nikon D810, the real advantage. If you're able to zoom with your feet and frame everything perfectly, that's wonderful. That's not always the case. It's ne basically never the case with sports, action, wildlife, photojournalism, street photography. Oh, damn. You know? One of the best aspects of, uh, of uh, you know, producing images people want to see is the ability to crop. You could take two, you take one damn image and you could just perfect it in Lightroom and print it. People go, <laughs> or you could take the same damn image, not always, obviously, if it's a shit picture, it's a shit picture. And uh, if there are, if there is an element, there's a nugget or a diamond of gold in that image, crop the rest of it the hell out, even if it becomes grainy. You know what the human brain doesn't give a shit about? Your eyes do. Say, I see grain. I see grain. That's the other thing people bitch about. Some of the best images on earth are grainy freaking images. People are like, that's grainy. That's grainy. Your mind doesn't work that way. Your mind works off of impressions. Kind of like how it sees shapes and faces and shadows and whatnot. Your mind does not work in sharpness. Your eyeballs do. You'll talk about it. It's not very sharp. It's grainy. Sharpness is something else. Excuse me. I meant to say grain. Your brain works on concepts. Your brain works on uh, the expression of what is captured or rendered, or both, obviously. If there is a nugget of gold in that picture, like I said, you have the exact same picture. If you just perfect it and print it out, give you a snooze or nobody gives a shit about it. But if you crop out the uh, the exciting part of that picture, like a beautiful crop can make or break a picture. Nobody talks about that anymore. Why the hell don't people talk about that? A crop will make or break the image far faster, I said faster with a capital F, uh, than it being improperly developed in uh, Lightroom. 
What's more important, perfect Lightroom development or a uh, really good crop to show composition and simplify the the crop is more valuable. And you know how long it takes to crop? It's like if you can identify that aspect of your shot which needs to be cropped out, that's golden. And you know how long it takes to go crop done. That's pretty hard, isn't it? I found it. This just this, this one section of my image is perfect. I'm, I don't care if it's grainy, because your brain doesn't give a shit about that. It doesn't. That's why some of the most famous, most expensive, valuable pictures on earth are some grainy old shitty shots from film. But it's taken with uh, 1600 speed, and it was uh, dusk, and man, the shots are so grainy. Your brain doesn't care about that. It cares about expression. As long as they can identify what's going on, or the expression is actually uh, translated to the subconscious, it doesn't care about grain. It's going to make a crop, if I crop out 80% of the picture, then it's going to be grainy, because then I'm going to have to take that little section, I'm going to have to blow it up. So, who gives a shit? If that's the shot, who gives a shit? It's better than letting it languish on your freaking hard drive, isn't it? Eh, that shot's no good. It's like, did you really look at that shot? I see something awesome. It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, go like this. Like, right over that. Oh my god, I see it. Yeah, but, but, but if I do that... No, shut the fuck up. Crop it out. That's it. Who cares if it's grainy? But there's the one advantage of a high megapixel camera. The real advantage of a high megapixel camera. The real advantage. Because not everything's perfect. If you can frame things perfect, you know, that's fine. That's a different type of photography. That is not most photography. That is even not even a majority of photography. Cropping it. People worry more about Lightroom than they do cropping. A good crop is far more important than an image uh, heavily jacked in Lightroom. That's a fact and it's undeniable. And there are a lot of awesome pictures languishing on your hard drive that you're like, crap, 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 crap. They're languishing there because you did not have the vision to actually look in the picture and say, well, you know, if I cropped it over here, I was like, oh, man, if I cropped it right there, that would be awesome. People don't do that. And they should be. And it's really freaking stupid that they don't. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. It's wet, cold, and miserable outside, and that sucks ass. It sucks. It's all right. When it's winter time, it's time for indoor macro photography. Macro. Bye.